Hey guys, I'm super excited to bring you this video. In today's video, I'm gonna be installing some Diode Dynamics SS3 yellow fog lights in my 2021 Toyota RAV4 Prime. The SE model of my RAV4 Prime does not have this opening for fog lights, so I had to pick up these bezels online. I'll have links to everything below. I hope this is gonna go okay. I hope it's not gonna be too much work. I have the car parked in here in my garage because it is crazy, crazy windy out there. I always get so much wind at my house, but it's also just started to rain. I'm gonna try to get this done today before my bills play at four. I would really love to be able to see these yellow fog lights at night tonight and test it out. Super excited to see it. Welcome back. So as I said in the opening, this car does not have the bezels. I had to order these on eBay. I'll have links to everything below. I know some people buy kits and stuff like that, but I didn't need the whole kit. I just needed the bezel. I bought the lights. These lights are crazy, crazy expensive. It's the most I've ever spent on fog lights, but I really wanted the best. These were $320 fog lights, plus I think like $10 shipping. I'll have the link below if you are as crazy as me and want to install these, but they're supposed to be amazing. I didn't buy a kit that includes the bezels and a fog light and all the wiring because I have wiring, I have relays, I have everything else I need. I didn't need the whole kit. So I did end up saving a little bit of money because I just got the bezels. I think these were like 18 bucks, something like that. Also, I'll let you know before we get into this, I preemptively spray painted this cover. It comes in a flat black, which is fine for a lot of the RAV4s out there because they have the flat black trim. But with the RAV4 Prime, it's a gloss black trim. And I want it to match a little bit better. And spray paint's gonna be fine. I know auto body guys are gonna laugh, but it, it really does seem like it holds up pretty good. And it's a small portion. I think it'll be fine. I used a standard Rust-Oleum gloss black spray paint you can get from Home Depot or Lowe's. I put a couple of layers of that on here. I've watched some other videos online of other people installing fog lights. And it looks like I'm gonna have to turn the steering wheel to one direction or the other and access the inner fender well. Remove that fender well. And I should have fairly easy access hopefully, <laughs> to the light area down there. It's kind of a tight space, but I'm gonna to try to record as much as I can. I'll also have links below to other videos here on YouTube from other people who have done a great job installing these fog lights. I learned from them, so feel free to watch their videos as well. But with that all out of the way, I guess it's time to get started. So we've got the box open already. It comes all nicely packaged. The couple pods are right there. This one isn't screwed in yet, but yeah, it's just gonna clip there in place. Looks pretty easy. There is a bit of a gap around there. I asked a few people online, I guess the gap is normal, but yeah. So then because I don't have an existing kit, I'm going to end up cutting these wires right here in the middle. And I'm gonna be doing some of my own wiring from these to a relay and a switch. You'll need a couple of panel popper tools, just like this. Then over here, I've got my drill with a 90 degree bit on there. I'm assuming it's 10 millimeter, it usually is. And so far, that's all I know of that I'll need. But here we go. I see one 10 millimeter up here. So first off, I already noticed those are different. Just so you know, the one down here is a bit longer, this one's shorter. So I will have to remember that, which is part of the reason I make these videos. So. I can go back and watch my video and see where the screws went. And then right here, you definitely can't see it. There's a little pop plastic rivet thingy right here. The car is still new, so these are gonna come out very easy. That's why I always like trying to do my mods when early on when the car is young. Oh, there's another one right there. It's another short one. So like another pop rivet right there. Not sure if I'll have to pull them out this high, but I will anyway, just in case. There's another one right there. I'm trying to be gentle so I don't crease this thing. Looks like the fender just popped out, which will be fine. It just clips. Looks like there's one down here below that I'll have to get. Another long 10 millimeter bolt. Oh, and it's right there. So far, so good. 
I don't think I really have to take anything else apart. I can reach it. It's right there. There is one of these pop rivets on the top of the bracket. So I'll have to pop that off and pop that out. I saw that actually in another person's video. And he said that was the hardest part about getting to this. You got that. All right, so there's just four or five tabs around the perimeter of this piece. And you just have to push those outwards in order to release the plastic insert. So I do have now the plastic insert loose, but there's a few things connected to it that I'm gonna to have to disconnect right now. All right, my family came in here to join me, but I've got some Nino's pliers and I just gotta release some clips. And it looks like I can do it from this direction Why through the front. No, because I'm putting fog lights in it, buddy. Okay, so I'm taking this out through the front and there was just a couple clips. You can see one of them right here and that was through here. So you just have to have some needle nose pliers to release that clip. And there was another one on the bottom side right there. And that is, hi buddy. I'm talking to people on uh, YouTube and that was this clip right here. So then I have to pull that one off, pull this one off and then this bezel will be able to come out and I'll be able to put the new ones in. There we are, that one's out. Now, here's the new one. I'm not sure if it's gonna be easier to mount this first and then mount the light or mount the light onto this and put them both at the same time. I think I'm gonna to try to mount the light to it because I think there's enough room that I can easily get that in there. So I'm gonna go do that. Well, it took some screwing around with. It was kind of tough to get it on there, but I was able to, I think, get it to a position that should work. With this one, maybe it's different with cars that have the OEM fog lights installed. I did need two screws that it didn't come with. I happen to have some self-tapping stainless steel screws, so I used those in these two positions here. And then if you can see the back of this, right here is the fog light, this is the bracket, this is the bezel from the car. You can see the bumps. I angled these downwards a bit. I've seen online that some people say you should leave those loose until you get them installed and you can test them, but I just don't know how I'd be able to get in there with a wrench on both sides. Like, so it's pretty tight in here to get an Allen wrench. On here, I probably could. I'm just kind of rolling the dice. I really don't know exactly how far down I should point it, but yeah, so that's what I did. I'll try to do the same thing on the other side and I hope it's at a good angle. Another thing you should be aware of if you're doing this with your RAV4 is you have a major gap all the way around. This opening here for the RAV4 is probably two and a half inches and these are three inch lights. So I don't know if you can tell, but there is LED underneath the circle. So it's gonna be blocking some of the light, which is pretty disappointed considering how much you're paying for these. Uh, I want every gosh darn lumen. <laughs> uh, and I'm not gonna get some of it because it's gonna be blocked behind this bezel. I hope it's gonna be okay. The, you can't see a gap up here on top because of the way it's angled. But if you look down here, you can definitely see that gap right there. But hopefully the way I did it is gonna work. So now it's time to get this thing in. I'll tuck that harness out of the way. Let's see if I can get this in here without scratching anything. Hey, that went in easily. All right, before I reconnect these wires and those clips and stuff, I gotta get a look from the front and see how it is. Lighting is really bad because I have a light behind, but that's uh, that looks pretty good. All right, that looks good. So time to reconnect stuff. Here's my clip to go on the top. Nice, well, <laughs> geez, that one's installed. I'll still have to do wiring, of course, but the light is installed. I guess I will go to the other side, mount it before I get to the wiring. I do all the wiring at the same time. So let's switch to the other side. All right, here we are on the other side. We're gonna do the same thing to remove this inner fender liner. Again, longer screw. I believe, yep, there's one under here. That's a longer screw. That's the shorter one. And another short one. Now we've got to pop out those little pop rivets. And there's one right here. 
I love when things are new and they come out so easy. Seems to help to unclip the fender just a little bit to get this corner out. There. And as expected, this side does have the windshield washer reservoir. But it's still right there and there's actually no wires attached to this bezel. So it looks like this might still not be too bad to get out. First I gotta get the clip out of the top. And right up here is the clip. Let's see if I can get it. It's hard to get in here one-handed. And you can use a panel popper tool. It's just kind of tight in here. So I use this little pick tool. I've always used those. All right, so I got that out. And then you can also actually see these clips right here. These are the ones that have to get pushed outwards in order to remove this bezel here. All right, got it. That one was a little more difficult. I'm right-handed, so using my left hand to try to pop those clips out was kind of a pain. But I got it. It's out. Time to install the light. All right, here I got it. It's all installed. And just like the other side, you can see these lower bumps are raised a little bit more. So that way it's pointed downwards a bit. I forgot to mention before that if you're confused and when you're putting this together, the shroud seems to go inside. If you can kind of tell the shroud to the fog light is curved. So the longer part of the shroud goes on the inside and the longer part of these brackets go on the inside. And then the plug is always on bottom. The instructions that it comes with talk about installing it into, I think, a Tacoma and a uh, Tundra and a Corolla, but nothing really specific about a RAV4. It doesn't even mention that this is applicable for a RAV4, but when you go to their website and you click on the link I have in the description below, it does say that this is the part for a 2019 and up RAV4. Just didn't know why the instructions didn't talk about it. All right, now I'm gonna clip this into the bumper. All right, sweet, those went in there, no problem. Now it's time for the fun part, the wiring. I always like doing that. <laughs> I'm looking to see where I'm going to run this wire. And I think I've decided that I'm going to remove this cover right here. And I'm gonna bring the wire up from the passenger side light over here, go through here underneath this thing and come out over here. Then they're gonna join over here because my other light is just right down there. So that wire will come up here. I'll join them together and then we'll figure out where we're going inside the vehicle. All right, so here we go. I've got, I think, all the supplies I'm gonna to need to hopefully wire this up. Uh, I still have to get a relay. Again, I'll have links for all this stuff below, but uh, this is gonna be the wire that I'm gonna be using. I think this is 16, yeah, 16 gauge, and that'll be plenty for the current that's gonna be used by these lights, which is quite low. I've got a little package here of different size heat shrink tubing, a little roll of electrical tape, and these are the plugs that come with the lights. These have adapters that would normally plug into wiring that's already there in your car, but because I don't have it, I'm gonna just cut these right in the middle. And this is the end for the fog lights. I'm gonna put this one back in the box because I'm not gonna need the other side. And I'm gonna solder new wire to these wires. So this just slides off. You can take off this little coating that's garbage. It's on there a little bit, so just gently tug it. There we go. These are my wire strippers, so I'll just strip back a little bit of wire on all of them. We'll slip the shrink tubing over one side. So put them all right there. I'll use green as power, and I'll use white as ground. I just gotta hold the button, wait for it to heat up. All right, so I have the positive soldered. This isn't heat shrunk yet, but I've got it over. Time to get the other one. All right, now it's time to uh, heat it up and shrink it. All right, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna let that cool. And then I'll also actually wrap all of this with electrical tape as well. And the whole wire is gonna be placed into flex loom. But before I get too far ahead of myself, I'm gonna do the same thing with the other plug. All right, I'm here at the passenger side. I've got that all flex loomed. 
and I just dropped it from the top down and I added a little loop here. They call them a drip loop just in case any water tries running down there. This is a pretty weatherproof connection, but just wanted to make sure that it had a path down instead of into the light. So now I'm gonna go up and continue working on the wiring. Okay, I'm here up top and there is plenty of clearance underneath this shroud to tuck this wire up under here. It's gonna be impossible to do one hand. Well, wow, uh, that actually wasn't that bad. But I'm gonna finish this up with the camera out of my hand and I'm gonna finish tucking this wire right under here, under the shroud. And it's gonna come over here and meet with the other one that I haven't dropped down there yet. Okay, this is coming along nicely. I've got this wire coming up from that passenger light down there. It is neatly, nicely tucked right underneath there comes right out here under here and it joins up with the one that is down there on the driver's side I already have the ground here soldered together I haven't heat shrunk that yet and then I went with this ground right over here I did some testing and that one seemed like the best I really didn't want to drill any new holes and that one had the best continuity to actual ground so I went with that one this is the positive wire. So this is gonna have to go through the firewall somewhere to a switch that I actually already have inside the vehicle. So I'm gonna have to find an opening through here. I have heard there is at least one, so I'm gonna have to figure that part out and try to find an opening through. And the plan is to put the relay inside somewhere under the dash, maybe near the switch. So that's where I'm at. Uh, time to figure out how to get through the firewall. Well, it looks like I'm going to have to pull the car out in order to open the door fully and actually get under the dash. So I just connected the lights to test them and they are working. So what I'm going to have to do is button everything up in the inner fender wells and back this car out of here. I mean, so far they don't seem like blindingly bright like I kind of thought they would be. I can look right at them and it doesn't hurt my eyes or anything. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, they're pretty awesome here at night. And I really, really hope that I got the angle correct. I mean, it looks pretty good. If I come over here at this point, which is probably 15-ish feet from the actual light, it's about knee height. So it's probably about 24 inches tall, something like that right here. I think the height looks like it's pretty good. If anything, it might even be a little bit low. If it's really bad, I'll have to take apart the inner fender well and adjust all those lights later. But for now, I'm putting back together the inner fender wells and I'm gonna back this car out of here so I can wire up the switch. Well, so far getting through this firewall has been the hardest part of this whole job. And I used to be a car audio installer back in the day. I think I found a spot to go through. There is a main wiring harness that goes through over here, but you can't see it at all. It's by feel only. I took a 12 gauge grounding wire just from home wiring. I had some leftover 12 to Romex and cause it's kind of stiff. I was able to poke it through the rubber. There's rubber on the inside and then there's rubber on the outside and you just have to gently and just using your fingertips kind of poke through and keep the pressure on and poke it through and I finally made it through but I can't get to it it's still very difficult I'll spin the camera around and I'll try to show you what I'm what's going on but it is really tight quarters so if any of you guys know another location to get through the firewall I don't dare drill through something like this because it's just so compact and then there's insulation on the firewall on the inside so you can't see anything really so right through here is where I'm trying to come. I doubt you could even see it, but back there, there's a main wiring harness and I am pretty sure my 12 gauge wire is through. I'll come on the inside and I'll show you what's going on over here. So this is my wire and it is just basically going straight back that way. But again, it's like, you can't even see it. It's just by feel only. And I'm pretty sure I am through. Yeah, it's, it's moving gently. Uh, but I got to find it on the inside still. Uh, but while I'm over here, I thought I would show you. I added this switch a while ago for a different project. So I plan on using that switch as the trigger for the fog lights. This is the positive output. I'm going to add a relay over here or back here somewhere. But yeah, while I'm here, I just figured I'd show you the switch that I'm going to be using. At some point, I have an idea to modify this compartment and add a few more switches because... I might want to add some other lights, some uh, reverse lights or uh, a light bar or something like that. And this is a good location to add switches because I'm kind of out of spots. I've already used that one and I've already used that one right there. 
But that's where I'm at for now. I gotta try to get this through here. My Bills game is supposed to start in like 10 minutes, so I might be done for the day, but we'll see. And yes, I got it. There's the wire right there. So I'm going to carefully pull that through without pulling it all the way through. So then I'd really be screwed. Uh, but I'm gonna pull that out just enough so I can wrap some wire and electrical tape around it and gently pull it back through the firewall. All right, I've got that wrapped with electrical tape around this wire and that wire. I even have a little bit of wire lube that I'm gonna use. I really want this to slide through there and I don't want to be stuck. So hopefully with the wire lube, I can get it through there just fine. Okay, I'm pulling it right through here. Oh yeah, got it. That is awesome. All right, <laughs> that's great. So now I can wire up the relay and I might be able to test these lights out tonight. Yes, that's awesome. Okay, I've got that soldered. I'm gonna drop this other heat shrink down and I've got my heat gun and I will shrink that, wrap it with tape and get some flex loom on it and the front end will be done. That is awesome. So I'm out here, I don't have the switch wired up yet, but I really, really wanted to see what these lights look like because they cost me an ass load of money. But this is my normal lights. So this is just low beams, not headlights. Those are headlights. I think they are excellent. I have no complaints about the lights of this car. Now I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like with these fog lights without any lights on. Well, that's it. I'm a little disappointed, honestly. I thought they'd project a little further down the road, but I think that's my fault. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm probably going to have to get back into the fender well and adjust those angles because I definitely think they should be projecting further down the road. But that's it for now. I'll have to pick up again with this tomorrow. Good morning, guys. As you saw in the last clip, I was very disappointed with the output from these lights. I just mess up the angle, so I'm going to have to take apart the inner fender wells again and adjust all of that. Regardless though, I had to finish up the electrical, so I've got the switch and the relay all wired up now. I'm going to show you guys how I did that. Now keep in mind, this car is a little different because it's basically a hybrid where the battery's in the rear, but I also added a junction box in the rear so I could add accessories and different stuff. So if you're going to do this, you're going to have to figure out your own power side. If it's a gas car, the battery is going to be up front under the hood. If it's a hybrid, it's going to be all the way in the back like me. So that's where you'd have to go for power. Some people like using those ADA fuses, but I don't like tapping into the OEM wire. I try to avoid it as much as possible. But with that said, I'll take you inside and I'll show you my wiring. All right, like I mentioned, this is my switch that I added right there for the fog lights. Yes, it could get one with a fog light icon on it, but I had that one already installed and I, yeah, so I'm just using that. And then I can pop this off, bring that down a bit. And here is my relay. So the green wire is going to the lights underneath the hood. Oh, and by the way, I use 16 gauge wires. 14 would be a little bit better, but 16 is fine. These should draw about four amps, something like that. The smaller 20 gauge wire is going to the switch just because that doesn't really carry any current. You can get away with a smaller wire. The red wire here goes to my distribution box in the rear. And I just put a jumper off this just in case I ever wanted to add something else or maybe even just test something and I needed power up here and then black is ground and I have it grounded right there. All right so then I just run the wire along this channel right here and you can see all of the other wires that I've run for different things and then in order to get it up under here you do have to pop your seat up just a little bit so you can get back in there. You might be able to see my other wires that I've run in the past and then that wire comes right through here I added this piece of wood just to mount different things to. It's a giant open area right here underneath this panel once you remove it. And all of these cables come over to the junction box that's right here. Uh, it's a six pole junction box. Pay no attention to the orange wires. And then the five amp fuse right there is for the fog lights. Now if you weren't going to install that junction box or obviously you don't have one or something, the battery is over here. The 12 volt battery is right here so you would have to run a wire across here over to the battery it is all extremely easy nothing to be afraid of well i'm going to put everything back together so that concludes this video 
I'm a little disappointed. I really wanted to have some off-road footage for this video here at the end, but obviously I made a big mistake by not angling those correctly. So that'll have to be in a future video. I'll do some night driving, maybe some off-road driving, definitely some winter driving, because that's going to be here any minute. It's like 32 degrees out here this morning, but I promise I'll include that in a future video. But I hope this helps somebody. Don't make the same mistakes that I did, because it's very disappointing. But that's it. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.